welcome to the Irish in the UK. This week we're coming to you from the Cresta Court Hotel in Altrincham, Cheshire for St Brendan's GEA 16th Annual Dinner Dance. We'll also be in Birmingham for the visit of the President, Michael D. Higgins. And we'll be catching up with a fantastic lady called Maggie O'Malley, who is celebrating her 103rd birthday. But first up, we're off to meet some of the guests at St. Brendan's GA dinner. Well, I don't care. Barry, welcome to Manchester. Thank you very much, Martin. It's great to be here. So well, it's, it's good to see you here. And of course, you'll be playing to a big audience tonight here at St. Brendan's uh, Dinner Dance. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I, see, I know it's sold out here tonight. And I, I was talking to a guy uh, just a couple of weeks back. And it turns out he was a year ahead of me in school. A guy called Sean McMahon is the chairman of this club. And I know Sean very, very well. So i I'll hopefully get to catch up with them sometime tonight, so um, it's, yeah, it's great to be a part of this night. The last time I caught up with you now, Barry, was about three or four years ago. You were here with your dad at the Middleton Arena, and you were the support act that night for your dad. That's right, it's actually three years. I'm, I'm officially three years out on my own now, so um, that would have been three years ago. Uh, I, I was on the road with dad for about four months when I when I went out on my own, and um, it was a great learning curve. Dad, dad taught me a few tricks of the trade, so... Um, that was my apprenticeship into, into being a front man. And of course, Up the Jive was a great hit for you. Yeah, Up the Jive was, was a big, big song and, and still is today, thank God. Um, last week, I just uh, released my, my latest single, uh, a song called Young Again, and went right into the UK number one slot on the iTunes download chart. So very grateful for that. And uh, it's doing very, very well in, in Ireland as well. So um, yeah, just I'd ask your, your viewers to keep requesting it on their, your local radio stations and if there's any DJs out there that don't have it yet, please get in contact with me via my website which is barrycarrowmusic.com and uh, I'll make sure you get a copy. Now I know that you're really busy as well up and down the country of course, you're, you're performing all over, but you're back here in Manchester on the 26th of April. I am indeed, it's going to be my first time playing in the, the Irish World Heritage Centre, uh, I believe it's a lovely venue. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I, I love Manchester. I spend a lot of time in Manchester because I'm a Man United fan. Now, before we let you go, we know that your dad is a highly popular person. He's got so many fans all over the world. And I know that a lot of people would like to send him very best wishes because we know he had a hip replacement recently. How is he doing? Yeah, dad's doing very, very well. He's, um, he got out of the hospital three days after the operation and he's recovering great. He's just taking his time and, and um, doing everything that the, the doctors and the physios are telling him to do. So um, I'd say in about another six weeks, He'll be he'll be raring to go. Yeah, the the band is pumping, hit drums thumping. Michael, as a founding member, you must be very proud tonight here at the Cresta Court. I am, I am indeed. I've had some great nights, but this is also a great night, you know. Sixty years is a long, long time. And I suppose <laughs> When I started the club in 1959, I never dreamt that 60 years <laughs> I'd be at the Crest of Court celebrating the big night. And of course you've had some great players in the club and you've had some great teams over that 60 years. Oh, tremendous teams. I mean, in the 70s, 80s, 90s and in even to the 2000s we had brilliant teams. But the great thing above them all was the many youth players that came through, Manchester-born lads who came through to win senior championships, senior leagues and Wolf Tone Cups and many more on competitions. Some of them 14 on the team sometimes, so it was great, great times. Highly delighted with uh, that the youth have reformed again because I honestly believe I was a founded member of the youth as well and I never regretted it because they were, they've done the club brilliant over the years and now hopefully we're starting another era of youth. And Jackie, of course, you played for St. Brendan's for a long time. I played from, my first game was against uh, Young Ireland's of Leeds in 1972 at Brooklands. And my last one was at Half End in August of 1991. And the man here beside me, Michael Mangle, was the man who enticed me to join St. Brendan's all those years ago, promising me trips up and down through Britain in his fast-moving cars and big feeds in Nick's Cafe and places like that 
and of course I was a very impressionable young fella at the time and I took it all in and I joined up and it was the greatest move I ever made absolutely still friends of mine here today all the best friends I have live here in Manchester and it was all because of Michael Mangan and St Brendan's Football Club and of course on a night like tonight we mustn't forget uh, Jimmy McKnight who sadly passed away recently a great great stalwart of St Brendan well uh, on the weekend of the All-Ireland, as you know, a lot of your friends and my friends, we all meet up in Dublin for the weekend. And on that Saturday morning, I got off the train and I met Jimmy and I spent the whole of Saturday with him in Cassidy's Hotel, reminiscing, talking old nonsense and good times that we had. And unfortunately, that was the last time I was to see him alive. Just one little thing I'd like to say is that when De La Salle joined, Lancashire. We took four county titles out of seven against De La Salle. De La Salle had nobody playing for them that hadn't can't play in county in Ireland. So they was, these were great years and years that we'll never forget. Michael, great to see you here in Manchester, a special guest at St. Brendan's GA Dinner Dance. Yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic and to be here for a, a, an occasion like this, 60th uh, anniversary. And as I was saying to them inside at the function, uh, the even nicer part about it is, of course, the club colours are maroon and white. So I suppose if I was going to be invited to a club uh, do, then I'd never say no to something where the club colours are maroon and white. And of course you told a few great stories in there and, uh, and one of them was, as the Galway man myself, you know, one of them was a little bit of a sad one when Galway lost the All-Ireland in 63 to Dublin. Oh ah, yeah, I remember that as, as one of my first memories of seeing GA on television. Obviously back in the day, like RT were only on the air a year or two at that stage anyway, you know. So this was all a novelty and this was all something new. And I, I, the other thing about it is, like back in those days, there was only one or two televisions in the parish and we got a television just before that 63 All-Ireland Final. So there was all this kind of stuff, you know, this was, people, young people now won't maybe fully understand what that would have meant at the time in a community, you know, but it was a, it was a huge cultural change for everybody. Now, of course, the Sunday game you presented for 35 years, a long, long time, a lifetime. Uh, but, and we all enjoyed watching it here overseas. The GEA games mean an awful lot to us, and we've all enjoyed it. Thank you for all the entertainment you've given us. Well, you see, this is a big thing, is, you know, just on what I was saying a moment ago about the influence of television. Back in those days, it was television coming to Ireland. But in more recent years, of course, it's been the Sunday game going out there globally. You've presented the show, as we know, for a long, long time. Uh, how are you enjoying a little bit of spare time these days? I don't have any spare time, so <laughs> I'll get back to you when I actually do. It's been, uh, it's been very busy because the thing about it is when, you, when you're outside commitments to RTE, uh, other things come into the, the play. For instance, like this weekend here uh, in Manchester. I wouldn't be here in Manchester if I was doing the League Sunday programme or the, the uh, Saturday night programme kind of and all that kind of stuff. You know, so you, you stop doing one thing and then you start doing something else, but sure, that's life. The sun may stop shining in heaven The salty oceans may run dry and We've come back here again to the Cresta Court Hotel and uh, they've turned out in their numbers for the 60th dinner dance. Um, we filled the room, we brought in a great act, a special guest, the presentations have gone well and the dance floor is packed now at the minute so we're, we're all very pleased. And I've learned something about you tonight that I didn't know before, that you used to sing with Barry Kerwin. That's right, that's right. Um, I don't know if I can still hold note to the same extent as Barry but we grew up together, went to school together, sang at school together. Of course Sean, tonight is a great night for your members, your sponsors, your supporters, your players and it was great to see so many presentations in there as well. Yeah, we had a very good year last year. We had senior and junior honours with the football teams in the club and then we had our annual individual awards for club players of the year and club persons of the year and it went down well. Now, Ashlyn, of course, your PRO. It's been a busy time because the PRO in the club is always somebody that's really busy trying to promote the club. 
That's right, yeah. Um, we've been kind of preparing for the dinner dance now for quite a, quite a while um, and just kind of trying to get, you know, everything promoted and everything out there and gather in all our sponsors. Um, we've been really, really lucky this year with the amount of commitment we've had from sponsors and, you know, that makes such a big difference to us as a club um, and that's something that them kind of partnerships are things that we want to carry through next year and for the next 20 30 years and um, there's some great new faces here today some great businesses some people here who maybe haven't been here for 10 years so it's great to see those names and faces back again and hopefully we can build on that for the year going forward and of course it's vitally important to all the GEA clubs and St Brendan's of course that you have good sponsors and people that support you year after year yeah, like it's it's really is a crucial part of the club, especially you know it is a voluntary organisation. It's great to have those people behind you. Tell me about your ladies team, how they are doing. So we uh, we started uh, the underage structure now for a few years, and we've got a lot of young girls coming out to train, and it's great to have a presence of previous ladies footballers coaching those youngsters and bringing them up through the ranks. So hopefully, in in no time at all, we'll be we'll have our our own team out there uh, competing. Well, what a night it's been here at the Crystal Court Hotel in Altingham for St. Brenda's GA Dinner Dance. And well done to everybody involved. Now, we're going to take a very short break. And in part two, we'll be in Birmingham for the visit of the President, Michael D. Higgins. And we'll be catching up with a very special lady called Maggie O'Malley. See you in a minute. Welcome back to the show. We are here at St Anne's Iris Centre in Birmingham and there's great excitement as we await the arrival of the President of Ireland, Mr Michael D Higgins. We'll be speaking to some of the key people involved with the President's visit. I should say very much how much I appreciate that very warm welcome uh, that you've shown to Sabina and I and those who are travelling with me. I'm absolutely delighted to be here in Birmingham and to be meeting the Irish community in all their generations, and you're all looking very well. Morris, what a fantastic day here at St Anne's in Birmingham, and of course for the Birmingham Irish Association. It is, it's an absolute fantastic day. We're privileged to have President Higgins with us here today to come and meet the Irish community and see our centre and the fantastic work that we carry out in the community. And of course he paid tributes to a lot of people right across the board here today in his speech, but he also gave a glowing reference to the Birmingham Irish Association for the wonderful work that you do here for the older Irish community in the city. He did, it's fantastic to hear praise from the President. The work we do here, it's hard work and we're here seven days a week looking after the older Irish community and to hear thanks and praise from our own President is tops it off, it's fabulous. What will it mean to the uh, community here to have the President here with you today? Well, you can see how many people are here today. There are, everybody's delighted. They're over the moon that they've had the opportunity to meet President Higgins. We had 300 people in the hall today. We could have filled it five, six, seven, eight times over. All the community in Birmingham, they're absolutely buzzing and proud as punch that he's come to visit us today. Now, before we let you go, Morris, tell us about your fabulous events leading up and including St. Patrick's Day. So in the next few weeks, it's not far away now to St. Patrick's Day. So we've got an outdoor live music stage. We've got Finbar Fury coming over to entertain us. So there'll be about 5,000 people outside listening to him for the day. We've got our wonderful parade. There'll be 100,000 people out on the streets of Birmingham. And we've got a lot of other fringe events leading up to that. So from the week before, so probably a few days after as well, we'll be celebrating in the city. Well done, Morris. You've done a great job today, you and all your team, and you do fantastic work here in Birmingham. Well done to you. Thank you. Phyllis, tell me, what was it like to meet the President? It was a very memorable moment. It was absolutely fantastic. What did he say to you? He didn't say anything, believe it or not. You've done all the talking. I did. <laughs> what a great crowd here today as well. Yes, but Sabina told me that she's from Cara Sabine. That's where she originated from. 
Oh, I could tell that all right. She can talk as well, you know, can she? Yes, yes. So there were two of us in it. <laughs> now, Yvonne, what was it like for you, second generation Irish, to meet the president? I, I was very starstruck. I got incredibly nervous going up in the queue. So uh, it was just a real honour, yeah. It's a once in a lifetime occasion. It, it was. I think that's why I was so nervous going up. You don't meet the president um, of any country, never mind Ireland. Of course, for you that was uh, born here in Birmingham and, and reared in Birmingham, it's a great occasion for the community here to have the president. It is. I'm really proud that, um, uh, you know, when we were sat in the audience and he was up here on stage here talking, I, I just couldn't believe that he was here in Birmingham because... Uh, you know, you'd always expect to have to travel to Ireland to see him, but to have him here on our doorstep here in St Anne's was just terrific, yeah. Phyllis, I know you're a great County Mayo lady. Do you want to send a message to all your folks back home? Yes, I would love to say hello to the people in Coolcran, Lord Edward Street, Nakanillon and Clunky, and Bun and Earthish, of course. Also to my brother John Swinford and my sister in Galway. Lovely to see you both today. That's all right. They'll all want to shake our hand now that we've shook the hand of the president. <laughs> Birmingham has had Irish people coming to it for such a very, very long time. I was speaking earlier about when the great wheels of the Industrial Revolution began uh, to move, and it is there that the Irish community made such a long, a con a outstanding contribution. Oh, what a day, Martin. We couldn't even begin to tell you. I mean, the Irish president in St Anne's, you know, our little club here tucked away in Digbeth and he's actually here standing on our stage. I mean, it's absolutely brilliant. It's brilliant for me, brilliant for Birmingham Irish and, and all the Irish people in Birmingham as well that were invited to see you. And I think, you know, President Higgins, he'd been, you know, he'd arrived early today. Uh, he went to the council house for a civic reception and came back here, but he never left until he shook all 300 hands in this building today, which says an awful lot. It's a great credit to you and all the staff here at St Anne's. You do a great job, but you've got a lot of big bands coming up now and plenty of celebrations in the near future. T.R. Dallas is back, Trevor Lockery, um, we've got the Salt Creek bands, we've got Lisa Stanley next week, we're hoping to have Francis Black. The list is endless, Martin. If you just check us out on St Anne's Club Facebook page, you'll see who's coming. I want to thank you all very, very much uh, uh, for all of your efforts and to wish you every health and happiness and success in, in the future. Well, it's been a great day for the Irish community in Birmingham and everyone enjoyed the President's visit. Now, Maggie O'Malley was born in County Mayo and she immigrated to Manchester at a very young age. And we're off to meet her now as she celebrates her 103rd birthday. Hello there. My name is Maggie O'Malley and I'm 103 today. Well, I wander today to the hills, Maggie, to watch the scene below Ah, the creaking old mill Is still, Maggie Where we used to long, long ago Nathan here just dropping by to wish you a happy 103rd birthday, Maggie. Have a fantastic time up Cross Malina, up the west. Maggie, 103 today. Many congratulations to you. Thank you. I believe you've been getting out and about, though. Oh, yes, I get about. I've been in Blackpool. I've been in Southport, St. Andrew's Sea. So you're still enjoying life? Yes. Go to the door for an out night. Oh. Any boyfriends over there? Oh, plenty. Plenty of them. <laughs> you all for me, though. <laughs> now, tell me, are you still having the hot toddies at night time? Because you told me 12 months ago that a hot toddy is the recipe for a long life. It is. And I have, if I feel like it, I can have four. Wow. Four now, of them. Now, do you remember three years ago, T.R. Dallas came here for your 100th birthday and he sang you a song? Yes, that's right. Never grow old. Well, listen, Maggie, 
you take a look at this now. Hello Maggie, TR Dallas here. I'm absolutely delighted to get the opportunity of wishing you a very, very happy birthday. 103. I can't believe it's two years ago since we drank tea in your house. I hope you have a great birthday and I'm sure you will. Looking forward to meeting you sometime soon again. Happy birthday Maggie. God bless you. Maggie, did you enjoy that from TR? Oh yes, very much. Now, I believe that you've got uh, relatives coming over from County Mayo on Wednesday to see you. That's right, my first cousin, Mary B. Maroon. And would you like to send the rest of your relatives over there in County Mayo a message from the heart of Manchester? Well, I wish them all the best of luck and good luck to them all. And I'm sure they wish you good luck as well, Maggie. And I know that you're very well looked after here with your daughter, Mary, and, yeah. and your cousin, Margaret. I'm very, 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 very thankful to them. So there's only one thing left for us to do now. Break open that bottle of uh, Jameson's whiskey and we're going to have a hoolie. A hoolie in Halligan Town tonight. <laughs> Listen, a very happy birthday to you, Maggie. God bless you. And Thank may you. God grant you good health uh, until the next time we meet, 12 months from now. God bless you, love, too. I'm very, very grateful to you for what you're doing. Bridie, you must be delighted to be here today celebrating Maggie's 103rd birthday because I know you've known her virtually all your life. Yes, I have indeed. I used to look forward... When I was a little girl, I looked forward to... Maggie coming to visit us. And that was in Ireland? That was back in Mayo. How long have you both been here in Manchester? A very long time. And Bridie, I know that you had a very special uh, celebration yourself a few weeks ago. Yes, I had. I was 90 years old. My goodness, many congratulations Thank to you. Thank you very much. Now, Philomena, <laughs> of course, it's great to see Maggie here in good health and smiling and joking. Oh, it's wonderful to see her. She's a wonderful woman. Yeah. I come down to see her pretty often, like, you know, I don't live too far away. Do you know, it's, it's, she'd lift your spirits when she comes, when you come in, wouldn't she? She does, and anyone in the family that comes with me, they love to see her, yeah. yeah. And Margaret, of course, you're Maggie's cousin. You see quite a bit of her, don't you? Yeah, I do. I come as often as I can, so I do, yeah. Look forward to it and catch up with the news and bring in other news, of course, as well, yeah. And she likes keeping in contact with the Irish at home and uh, her relatives in Mayo and, of course, people around here as well. Oh, she does. She, uh, she remembers everything and she's a great memory for everything that she's told. Like, like she came to the Irish with us, Irish Centre with us in November there, like, my brother was over. And we had two lovely afternoons in it with her. Oh, she loves the music. Like, my brother's played accordion that, and she loves that, so she does, yeah. Well, we're delighted to see Maggie in such great form. And a big thank you to Nathan Carter and T.R. Dallas for making Maggie's birthday so special. Now, that brings us to the end of the show for this week. We hope you've really enjoyed it. Don't forget, Henry McGlade is back next Thursday night at 7 o'clock, and we are here with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. All on Sky Channel 192, Freesat 161. Until the next time, from Maggie and all her family, see you soon. Hey.